Today we're going to be working on John's 1976 C3 Corvette Coupe in a very beautiful bronze root beer color. Uh, pretty popular in the 70s, but right now it's a lot dirtier uh, than it came in. One, because it's been under this car cover or this car port. So it's a little dusty, but I mean, honestly, it's a really, really nice car. So I worked on this car last year. I did brakes on it, uh, a couple of interior things. Uh, that kind of thing, and still going strong. Oh, and the hood's stuck. Alright, so under the hood, we have a very original uh, Chevy small block. And the complaint that he has is that he is having spark plugs that are fouling. Okay, so I believe there's a couple of them. But the real complaint that he has is that he'll drive it 200 miles or so, and he'll have to fill up oil in that short amount of time at least a quart and he says that there's no real leaks underneath it so the only conclusion we can draw is that it's all coming out of the tailpipe somehow now this motor is original and it's from 1976 it might be time for a rebuild but we're just gonna see so right now what I'm gonna do is just see how well it starts and see what comes out of the tailpipe that kind of thing and go from there so under the hood, I mean, it's all stock. Every single little thing is stock. I mean, it still has the, you know, the exhaust manifold riser, so the smog pump, original carburetor, vacuum switches on thermostat. I mean, crazy, crazy original. I did rebuild the carburetor last time I was here, and choke's working. Let's just see how it fires up. I didn't notice any kind of smoke plume. Smells decent. The car started up fairly quickly considering it hasn't been run in two weeks. Uh, the choke's working. It's idling high like it's supposed to. I don't hear any misses or anything. These are idle down. It is starting to smoke a little bit after getting hot. See that? Yep, smoking. This is probably easy to miss when you're driving down the road. That's not water vapor. That's definitely smoke. And it doesn't do it when the car's first started, which makes me think he's got piston ring issues. It doesn't really start smoking until it warms up. So, I don't know. Right now it's not, not too bad, but it's a little bit colder than it was. Since the car has gotten a little bit warmer, it started to smoke a little bit more. Let's see what it does under load. Yeah, it doesn't like that at all. Let's try it again.
it'll burn out even if it wanted to. Unless you count the smoke coming out of the tailpipe, not the same stuff. All right, it's time to pluck this engine out of this car. So say goodbye to the smoky, nasty engine. What I'm going to do is basically today I'm going to focus on things that are on the top of the engine since I don't feel like crawling under the car today, but there's plenty to do. So uh, we have all the air cleaner and carburetor, uh, all the accessories on the front, the distributor, all that kind of stuff all needs to come undone before I can crawl underneath. I believe we're also going to do some cooling system upgrades at that point. So this is the last time you will see this engine in this car, which is probably a good thing. Now the best part for all of you guys watching in YouTube land is honestly almost everything underneath this hood isn't going to be used again because the crate motor is a newer generation of the small block Chevy. So like valve covers, intake, carburetor, air cleaner, smog pump, AC system, all that stuff is really up for grabs. Uh, it needs to be sold and it's going to offset his cost so he can buy cool stuff like dual exhaust and you know nice carburetors and stuff like that. So if you're interested in any of this original stuff, uh, shoot me an email because YouTube got rid of messaging. Uh, but that's, yeah, I mean, the, the radiator, and I think we're going to replace the radiator and all the cooling stuff too. So that stuff up for grabs as well, uh, various prices, but it's going to go decent. So let me know if you're interested in any of it because it's just going to sit around my house if you don't buy it. All right, progress is going very well on this 76, so basically everything... Most of the stuff off the engine is off the engine. I still need to take off by the power steering pump, water pump, and some brackets on the other side. Then disconnect the exhaust, motor mounts, and transmission, and it should come out. So, um, one thing though I recommended that John do is replace this radiator for a couple reasons. One, it's original to the car, but two, you can see This coolant that's coming out of it, I don't know if you can see that, it's in a black pan, but the coolant's pretty much like milk, it's not milky, it's like super like brown, like rust colored. And if you look inside this core, I don't know if you guys can see in there, but it's, it's all kinds of funky inside of there. Won't be surprised if it's plugged up, but yeah, it's, it's due to be replaced, I mean it's 40 something years old. It needs to go. The other thing I'm bummed about though is this fan shroud. It's cracked in like eight different places. So if he's gonna go with um, his old fan clutch and, and fan and all that kind of stuff, it might be a good idea to just upgrade to electric fans. It won't be that much more because this fan shroud's about 200 bucks plus another clutch is about 30. So you know after tax and after all the little odds and ends that I'm gonna need anyway, just to reproduce, you know, a new belt and all that. Just reproduces a mechanical fan. We're at almost $300, where about $400 you can get a nice electric fan set up with wiring and everything. So that's something else you'll need to think about and let me know. But it's coming along pretty good. Uh, hopefully I can get some all the water out of it so I can take the water pump off. And look at that. You guys got to check this out. The stuff you just don't notice until you get into it. So. This radiator shroud is in like five different pieces and they have used these little metal things to rivet it back together. Um, you can see one here, there's one there on the bottom, but check out this piece. It's, I know it has metal pieces on the inside or on the outside because you can see where they drilled the holes to put the rivets through. So I'm not very thrilled about that, but it's going to make it easy to take it out because it's already one piece and they've also destroyed this part right here. So. I'm going to recommend to not go with a shroud setup and go with an electric fan setup. It'll just be that much easier uh, to get it in and it won't, it'll cool way better than any, uh, than any shroud or any uh, factory shroud that you could put in. This fan shroud is a real masterpiece of Bubba ingenuity. Look how much time they spent holding this thing together. They made little brackets. They made L-shaped brackets and custom brackets. Look at these, round brackets, square brackets, all kinds of brackets. What a cluster. Oh my goodness, look at this. 
just to save this POS. Not worth it. Buy a new one, do something. Don't do this. This is going on Instagram because it's beautiful. And it's going to go on Facebook because that's something you don't see every day. Part of the plan on this motor is we're reusing the uh, stock exhaust manifolds and exhaust until um, John can order another exhaust. It depends on how many parts we sell, if we can do that. But I want to show you one thing. So in order to get the motor out with the exhaust manifold still attached to the exhaust, you have to unhook them, but also you can't forget to take all your spark plugs out and all your sensors out, like the dipstick tube that I haven't taken out yet. That needs to come out in order for everything to lift up and out the way it's supposed to go. Now let me show you on this other side. Most of these spark plugs I pulled out look pretty crappy, but let me show you this one that was on the number four cylinder. Look how nasty that is. How oil fouled and gross that is. And you know what's the scary part? I think this is one of the uh, ones that's been replaced semi-recently. So, I mean that right there just shows you how worn out the motor is. I mean, it, it doesn't knock, it's got good oil pressure, it just, I guess it just needs piston rings, so. Or it has a broken piston, one of the two. So, anyway, that's another sign right there of issues with the motor, and I'm glad we're replacing it. It's been a very long day, but this motor is ready to come out, so everything is undone. Uh, I took all the spark plugs out, I took all the bolts for the exhaust manifolds out, I took the starter out, I unhooked all this emissions crap on this side, Everything on the front, fuel pump, and in the back, all the bell housing bolts, and then all the bolts that go to the torque converter. Uh, ground cable, everything's undone. The oil pressure sender's out, so it should slip right up. So what I'm going to show you guys today is something most people don't know. So you notice the engine from here to about here. That's about four and a half, five feet, maybe. So if I were to take this engine hoist, and put it in from the front like a normal car, the, the boom would reach to about here. It wouldn't work. So the only way that I know how to get an engine out of a C3, especially if you're just doing the engine out of the transmission, is taking a wheel off, putting a jack stand here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide the engine hoist in this way, pull the engine up and over, and then over the nose, and then put it down right here. I believe I have enough room, pretty sure I have enough room um, to do this. But it's kind of nerve-wracking swinging a big crappy engine over the beautiful nose of the Corvette. Um, I always use a lift chain. I don't like using those little lift um, uh, plates that you put on top of the intake just because I've seen welds break on those. Uh, chain, I can trust the chain. So, uh, yeah, this hoist, I've, every single engine that I've pulled in and out has been with that hoist. It's the two-ton one from Harbor Freight. The one-ton one is not as long, so you need a two-ton. But uh, last thing, I swept the floor so nothing gets caught on the wheels, and we should be ready to rock and roll. One thing I forgot, I have the jack over here under the car ready to cradle the transmission with this block of wood. Uh, that way it's not just hanging by the transmission mount, uh, there's something holding it up. Um, if you're taking the engine out with the transmission, obviously you don't need that, um, but something that you got to do. look it's out so yeah you saw that harrowing moment where the engine was going across yeah that scares the crap out of me anyway so I only had two issues one was uh, this exhaust shield or this spark plug shielding got caught under the exhaust manifolds um, I guess I took the bolt out from it but anyway yeah that got caught um, other than that it was pretty much flawless with the exception of I needed so you see this clamp on the exhaust? See how it hangs down? It was touching my uh, my cherry picker. Guys, if your wife ever is like, why do you need more than one jack? You had, don't need three. That's why I need at least two, because if I didn't have another jack, I would have been out of luck. I, did, I got it to lift up the exhaust so I could get the engine out, but there it is. 
nasty turd is out. Original numbers matching engine, never been out of the car, is now out of the car. So, whew, time to get it on an engine stand and get it off my crane. The motor was so happy to get out of the car that it peed all over my floor. I'm hot, I'm filthy, I'm ready to be done. So we're gonna call this a day for today. And we'll work on it again next week. With this engine out, we can finally move on to the crate motor. So I've disassembled most of the crate, but uh, you guys can see the remains of it over there. But what this is, this is a blueprint engine. Uh, you guys can look that up on uh, Summit Racing, which is where I got it from. So it's about twice as potent as the old one, but the old one, remember, was pretty crappy. So this engine came with a couple of cool things uh, that I like. First of all, there's uh, this recommended add-on paper. Basically, if you have to add different spark plugs, balancer, flywheels, stall converters, all that kind of stuff, it's all the parts are right here. So that's good. Uh, next is this installation guide, which I've done this before, but for somebody who hasn't done it, I mean, it literally has one, two, three, four, five steps. So, I mean, not that bad of a guide. And I read it, and it's exactly what I do. So. And then stage six, seven, and eight. So that's cool. Next is, uh, it tells you what oil you need, but we already knew that. Um, also, they have special intakes and stuff like that. And then the other thing I thought was cool, let's see, was they have this test information on the engine that we bought. So at peak horsepower looks like to be one 389 which on a dyno is different than in the car and then peak torque looks to be 412 at 4000 rpm so not bad i mean what i like is that you have 340 foot pounds of torque at 2500 so it should be a fun motor here's the power curve not a hundred percent you know super high horsepower but that's not what we wanted uh what we wanted was definitely you know, something better than stock, but not something so crazy you can't drive it on the street. So, I like that. And it says you need to use these gaskets, not these gaskets. And then you got the warranty and special oil. So, a lot of cool stuff. I look back at the listing, it doesn't come with a flex plate or a balancer, which means I have to buy one, which I wasn't expecting to, but whatever. I wanted to put it in today, but it looks like it's not going in today. Oh well. Well, it's ready to go in. I got it out of the crate. I installed the new harmonic balancer on it and the pulleys. And then here on the back, we have a brand new flex plate. So this is a dual pattern flex plate and it's special because it's for a one piece rear main seal, which this is. So we couldn't use the one off of the old engine, but it has, you see how the, this hole from the outside is farther than this hole from the outside. So this will work on our transmission, which is a 400. Um, I believe different converters for different transmissions have different hole um, diameters, so that's why there's two different styles. So uh, we'll use only three of them, but it will fit. So now we get to put it in the car. Well, not completely finished. I have the motor mount bolts in and I have two bell housing bolts in for the transmission. But other than that, it's pretty much in. 
So let me show you guys the intake we're gonna put on it real quick. This is easy. Isn't that just beautiful? Yep, that's what it's gonna look like once it's on the car. So I'm super stoked about it, and I'm pretty sure this intake isn't much taller than the stock one. And with that being said, I hope I'm 95% sure we won't have to do anything to the hood. So, but yeah, there it is. It's one step farther and looking awesome. In order to start the front accessories, number one thing is the water pump. And there's a couple of things we need to do. We need to obviously paint it, but here on the old water pump, you'll see that there's a fitting right here on the side. That needs to come out, it needs to be put in here. Luckily, this new one came with a fitting for the top, so we don't have to worry about that. But it needs to be painted both sides. Uh, I need to actually go buy paint. And then we need to get the uh, pulley off of this old one and go from there. So these water pumps aren't that expensive. They're actually pretty affordable. It's just something, you know, if you're gonna put a new motor in, put a new water pump in. With the water pump painted, I went ahead and put it on. I was also able to mount fairly quickly the uh, power steering pump and the alternator. Something that I went ahead and did just because it needed to be done was uh, I have new belts for the car. So there's the new power steering belt and here's the old or the new alternator belt. Now from the outside, these belts look pretty good. You know, they you probably if you were on a super super duper tight budget, you could probably use them again. But I mean for like three dollars a piece you can get another one and this is why I suggested to replace them you can't see this when you're using the belt on the car normally but if I take it and bend it backwards you can see all these cracks all the way around so who knows how old these belts are even this belt which actually looks pretty good from the outside if you take it and you bend it you can see all the cracks on the inside so I'm definitely not a fan of keeping cracked belts like that. So those will go in the trash and the new ones will go on it. After we uh, figure out all the accessories, next is going to be the radiator and cooling system. And then a couple little wiring issues and we should be ready to go. Before we put the new radiator in, which I have right over there. Before we put that in, there's a couple things we need to do. So the first is I need to replace these uh, automatic transmission cooler hoses. Uh, it's just basically hose that's fit, you know 40 years old and uh, it's been leaking a little bit, but it could probably do to be replaced and cleaned up. It's one of those while you're at it type things. Uh, next is uh, I have these seals for the radiator that basically um, keep air from going around the radiator and force it to go in the radiator is what we want, and then we can put the radiator in. So there's a seal that goes across the top on each side. There's seals that go across the side and then one that goes across the bottom. Where you, uh, where are these you might ask? Well, that's what's left of them down there. So I took care of that yesterday. But we'll put those in really quick and get that radiator installed. Here we are with the new seals installed and the new radiator put into place. So this is a Champion, that's the company, uh, aluminum four, I believe it's a four row radiator but what I like about it is that it fits really, really nicely. So you can see that the edges of the tank right here, they fit right into the brackets that they need to. This one probably could get scooted over just a little bit, but you see it fits really nice. And when you press it against the seals, it seals up really, really nice all the way around. So I'm super happy about that. The other thing I like is that the bottom neck down there is not hitting the sway bar or the frame and also this top neck is where it needs to be so uh, I need to attach it where it needs to go and then I need to attach the fans and everything to it but little by little we will get there it's really good looking I like it and it's it's fairly cheap I think it's under I don't remember between 150 200 dollars maybe it's cheaper than a copper one and it will cool much better than a copper one so here's something a little strange uh, these are the brackets that hold on the radiator so uh, they basically go like this and clamp onto the edges of the tank. But weirdly enough, these have weird bubble goo in them. Uh, maybe it's because they got hot and melted, but I think this is something different. I've never seen it. Uh, this is what the they're supposed to look like. I have to edit. I have to modify these a little bit to get them to fit. But 
Yeah, that's weird. All right, we are very, very close to firing this thing up. I have a few little things to do. One of them is at the finish wiring up these electric fans, but I want to show you guys this craziness. So part of this uh, relay system for the electric fans is you have to plug into a key, a key power, basically 12 volts when the key is turned. Take a look at this. Look at this rat's nest that I found under here. So this car was equipped with some sketchy, sketchy cruise control um, security system thing. I am baffled, but uh, it's all going to get removed. And the main reason why is because it's drawing power for, or at least from where I need it. I need it for the electric choke and also for the um, relays. But you can see this, it's got a weird brake pedal switch thing and it takes vacuum and just all kinds of weird stuff this cord in the back goes to the transmission I don't know but I'm just gonna get rid of it all cuz uh, <laughs> I'm gonna begin it's just ridiculous alright guys after quite a bit of time the engine is finally ready to fire up so I installed all the front accessories I wired up the fan everything on the top of the motor is plumbed like it's supposed to uh, the only thing I'm going to leave undone is this power wire for the distributor. So, what I need to do is I need to turn the motor over with the starter enough to do two things. One, it's going to lube the engine. The instructions that came with the engine said, do this, even though they've already run the engine before, you still want oil up on your top end, which, yeah, makes sense. But two, I want to make sure that I have no gas leaks and I can get gas up into the carburetor. So, those are the two things we're going to do is we turn it over with no spark. Check for those leaks, check for leaks underneath, and then we should be good. We also, I have the oil fill plug undone so I can look down in here and you'll be able to see uh, the oil. Believe it or not, the brake in oil that I use for this is from Blueprint Engines and it's blue. It's straight up blue. It, looks, <laughs> it is nothing like I've ever seen before. It was like pouring alien blood into the motor. But yeah, we should be good. I fought a crazy battle with this starter, and I think it ended up being that the battery was bad, or it was battery cable connections. I don't know. Either way, I have my battery in it right now, and we should be good to go. So I'm going to turn it over a few times um, with, without the ignition on, and see if we have any fuel leaks, and make sure we get oil to the top of the motor. some oil pressure. Let the starter rest for a little bit. Ooh, 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 ooh. I saw gas puke out of that back bowl of that carburetor. I don't like that at all. But it does have it does have gas, that's good, but it just went <laughs> puked right out of there.
as you guys saw in the last video, it fired up great, it ran, and then nothing. And then from then on, it just run like crap the whole time that I was running it. So I decided there's something wrong with the carburetor. I pulled the carburetor apart, and then one of the uh, needles and seats were stuck. So what it was doing was dumping an insane amount of gas into the engine. And I will show you what happens when that happens. See these plugs? These were brand new. This doesn't have maybe two minutes of runtime on them. That is what happens when your carburetor dumps way too much gas into your engine. They foul. So um, these are definitely gas foul. They smell awful. And you know what? It's really just a manufacturing issue with the carburetor that was on it. So I have this one I grabbed out of my parts stash. I'm going to see if I can't get this to run the engine. And if I can, I'll swap the plugs out and see uh, if this carburetor is going to be any better. We're going to have a strongly worded conversation with Holly about their other carburetor, which was brand new, but crap. So I'm gonna, I took all the plugs out. I'm going to spin the motor over. Um, I'm going to pretty much dry out the cylinders because they're all gas valve anyway. Um, and then I need to fix these coolant leaks. And then from there, we'll go about trying to start it up again. But, I mean, what can you do? Sometimes brand new stuff out of the box, that's how it acts. It's really stupid. So I thought this car had starter or battery cable issues and it turns out I think it was just a battery issue. Now here's the weird part, I put my good battery in this car, drove it around and it started doing the same thing. So I need to check the alternator, see how much voltage is putting out when the car runs. So right now, as expected, we're at about 12 volts or so, okay? Let's see what happens when we start the car. Not very high. That's barely even over a volt. Yeah, that's not putting out very much. Either way, I'm going to test drive it. Alright, well. So this is going to be the end of the video. We are five miles into the 10 mile shakedown cruise and honestly nothing's happened. So that's good. Uh, checked under the hood, no leaks. Engine's running fine. We have, ooh, we have plenty of oil pressure. Water temperature is good. The gas gauge, we can fix that later. So basically what the car needs is it needs a new alternator but as of right now it will make the trip home so that John can put the alternator on himself which is probably a good idea because it's really just two bolts and three connectors and he's done. There's no reason for me to do it for him. Um, but I did find this really cool um, new way to the gas station. It's like a country back way. Uh, it avoids the highway, which is good. So if I ever have a car that needs gas that technically doesn't have all the tags and plates and stickers and all the stuff it's supposed to have, well, guess what? I can drive it this way, so that's cool. So that's going to be it for this video. I know it was really long, but hopefully you guys learned something, and hopefully John is happy with his new motor.